Welcome to There is a Method to the Madness. My name is Rob Maxwell, and I'm an exercise physiologist and personal trainer. I'm the owner of Maxwell's Fitness Programs, and I've been in business since 1994. Today is Monday, and we're starting 2023. Gosh, it sounds so strange to say that. Time truly does fly. And we have a question today coming from Tammy here in the Daytona Beach area. And her question was, no matter how hard you train, your fitness level, what you put into it, is there still something genetic about being a physique athlete like a bodybuilder? And that is such a great question. I told her when she asked me because I'm working on my third book and it's all about strength training and that's the part of the book I'm in right now. So it was pretty cool that it came up. Before I get into that, let me thank our sponsors, Jonathan and Lynn Gilden at the Gilden Group at Realty Pros. They currently have over 275 star reviews on Zillow and they are the best. They're professionals. I will put all of their information in the show notes. I'm currently trying to uh, get them to help me find a new location. We want to buy a building, so they're the people that I want looking for it. So we always want to consider that when we hire, right? We want true pros recommendations. All right, so the question basically is there a genetic predisposition towards being a physique athlete like a bodybuilder uh, fitness competitions there's different kinds I'll get into that in a second or can you just get in the best shape possible and uh, go compete the short answer is there is absolutely a genetic component and the long answer is let's get into it it's really interesting in my opinion so hopefully you have your notebook out Tammy and everybody else that want to take some notes. The uh, first fact is this, there are actually four genetic predispositions that are important when it comes to bodybuilding or physique athletes, all right? So for those that don't know, a physique competitor is concerned with their amount of muscularity, their symmetry, their stage presence, their leanness, i.e. body composition, and definition. That's different from, say, a power lifter where the amount of weight lifted is what's important when it comes to physique competitions. It's all in how you look. It's all in how the body looks. And there are different types, like there is pure bodybuilding, and the emphasis is a little bit more on muscularity as far as size goes and then there's for women there's bikini competitions to where it's less on the muscularity and more on the definition and then there are in-betweens like physique it's called classic physique or women's physique and then it's somewhere between bodybuilding and bikini for the ladies and with the men there's also physique competitions that aren't bodybuilding they're more physique contests where the men are wearing like board shorts or baggies and the emphasis is more on being trim with definition but a certain level of muscularity. Now as you see there is some ambiguity in all this. There's, it's up to the judges to visually assess everybody so there's definitely some gray areas but for the most part it's how muscular you are, how lean you are, how much symmetry you have, meaning are you well proportioned, and the level of definition. So that's what it boils down to. And yes, there's a genetic component. So getting back to the four characteristics, let me start with number one. Depends on what body type you are. There are three main body types. There is an ectomorph, which is the very, very thin build, thin boned, tend to be skinny in nature. When you think athletics, you think cross country runner. That would be the ectomorph. Has trouble putting on weight, rarely if ever becomes obese. All right. 
Then there is the mesomorph. The mesomorph is medium build when it comes to bone density. They tend to put on a lot of muscle, tend to stay pretty lean, but can gain some body fat. That is the physique athlete or body building genetic frame, a mesomorph. Athletically, think football player, uh, today's basketball player, which is very muscular, um, linebacker, running back, track star, and again, bodybuilder. All right, that, that's going to be your mesomorph. So that's the first genetic characteristic. If somebody is interested in physique contests, it really it suits them to be mesomorphic. And then final body type is the endomorph. And the endomorph have large bone structures and they tend to carry the most amount of weight, the most amount of body fat. They tend to be heavier genetically from the get-go and um, they have a harder time losing weight. They have a harder time getting very lean. It is hard for an endomorph to get into bodybuilding. If they lift, they tend to get more into powerlifting and some of the strength and power sports. It is also hard for the ectomorph to get into physique style competitions. Now, that being said, like all genetic characteristics, you can still be in incredible shape no matter what your body type is. Please don't think the mesomorphs are special that way. They're just special towards physique competitions. You can be an elite at any body type, all right? be in the best shape possible of any body type. It's just, especially for symmetry reasons, it would be harder for an endomorph to be more symmetrical, to show different areas of being larger and smaller. And it's so hard for the ectomorph to put on any substantial weight, it would be hard for them symmetrically as well. All right? One way to tell, by the way, I mean, a lot of times you simply can tell by looking at a physique, um, you know, the overall big picture of the physique, not like a one-time glance, but if you've known somebody long enough, you can pretty much tell what kind of body type they are. I mean, I kind of classify people, maybe not on purpose, but almost all the time. Um, body type, by the way, another word for that is somatotype. It's just something that a lot of us physiologists look at because, you know, it's important to know what frame you're dealing with with this but you typically know from an early onset like say high school age what type what body type somebody is one thing you can do is take your middle finger and thumb and wrap it around your wrist and that'll give you a good idea if it doesn't touch at all you're probably more endomorphic if it barely touches you're probably more mesomorphic and if you overwrap you're probably more ectomorphic now one final thing on body type is rarely are people one pure body type if they are, they tend to be more the elite, and I talk about that a lot. It's like at one genetic end, you're actually more elite. So the elite ectomorph is probably, if they're in the sports, a cross-country runner. The elite mesomorph is either on the bodybuilding stage or more likely playing football because there's a lot more money there or playing basketball. Um, if you're an elite endomorph, again, could be football, offensive line, something like that. So rarely are we all one. We tend to be a little bit of mixture, you know, but we definitely tend towards one. For example, me personally, I'm more of, say, an ectomesomorph. I tend to have more mesomorphic properties. Doing, you know, I've done a lot of the physique competitions, um, bodybuilding and I do have a little bit more ecto, so you would call me more of a meso-ecto, more meso, some ecto to that. All right, so the next genetic component then is what muscle fiber type predominates in you? To keep it simple, there are two main muscle fiber types, fast twitch and slow twitch muscle fiber. Now, fast twitch muscle fiber actually gets broken up into 1A or 2A and 2B. That gets a little confusing because then people think, well, there's three types, but there isn't. It's really slow twitch or fast twitch, but fast twitch has type 2A and type 2B. Type 2A are more of the intermediate fibers 
and they tend to be in the direction of which way you train them. So if you're more endurance minded, they're gonna act like the type one fibers, which are the endurance fibers. If, they're, if you train more towards strength and power and speed, they're going to be more like the type 2B, which are the strength fibers, okay? But to keep it simple for, these, for this discussion, there's two fiber types. Type 2, which are fast twitch. Type 1, which are slow twitch. Fast twitch muscle fiber hypertrophies, meaning it's the muscle fibers that gets bigger. Hypertrophy basically just means divides within itself creates more fibers within the fiber. The fiber itself divides and gets bigger within itself. Okay, so the individual muscle fiber splitting and getting bigger, multiply that times thousands, the whole muscle's getting bigger, all right? Fast twitch grow in that direction, hypertrophy. Slow twitch increase in endurance. What actually happens is the mitochondria, which is the powerhouse of the cell, actually multiplies within the type 1 fiber. But in the type 2 fiber, the actual cell goes through hypertrophy. To make a long story short, it's the type 2 fibers that make you bigger and stronger. So bodybuilders or physique athletes tend to have more fast twitch muscle fiber, which only makes sense, right? If it's the fast twitchers that go towards the strength speeds like track and field and football and the slow twitchers go more towards cross country well then that matches the body types as well right nature knows what it's doing we tend to have all of the properties in one direction or another or a balance thereof because of what we are actually designed to do all right so fast twitch muscle fiber and mesomorphic body type that's two almost needed, definitely needed, needed to a certain degree to be on a physique stage. All right, next we're going to look at another genetic component of muscle belly size compared to tendon size. All right, so muscles move bones. Muscles are connected to bones via tendons. That's what tendons do. Now, genetically, we tend to have either longer muscle bellies with short tendons or longer tendons with short muscle belly. Now, the ones that grow are the long muscle bellies. Think of a long balloon, a very long balloon. The longer the balloon, the more that balloon can fill up, right? The shorter balloon the less that balloon can fill up. So think of your muscles like that. Genetically, we tend to either have longer muscle bellies and short tendons or longer tendons and short muscle bellies. Uh, athletically, it doesn't really give you an advantage one way or the other, although the longer muscle bellies are going to be able to get bigger, so therefore you'll be more muscular, so it matters that way. But as far as the other athletic pursuits, probably doesn't have a overly large bearing. So one way you can tell is, I always tell people to use their biceps as an example, is flex your arm and keep your arm straight as you contract your biceps. So don't actually flex it. I use the wrong anatomical terminology. Contract your bicep with your arm pretty straight. See where the bicep starts. Is it really close to the fold of the elbow? or is it higher up on the arm? So if it's close to the fold of the elbow, you have longer muscle bellies, and that muscle can actually fill up and get bigger. If it's shorter, you're gonna see it maybe an inch or two away from the crease of the elbow. That's a shorter muscle belly with a longer tendon insertion, and there's gonna be less likelihood of that muscle getting bigger. It's just a matter of size, right? The, the bigger the base, the more it can fill up. So bodybuilders tend to have longer muscle bellies and shorter tendons, all right? You might be wondering, well, why'd you pick the bicep? Well, we are what we are, and that's the easiest one to see. It's not like we're gonna have longer muscle bellies in one area and shorter in another. That's just not how we're built. So we're basically just sampling one of the muscles that's easier to see. 
So we got three down, Tammy. So as you see, there's three, and there are three big ones. And then finally, there's a fourth, and that is genetically the amount of growth hormones that our body has at resting levels. That's really, really critical. We all know how important the endocrine system is, right? We talk about it all the time. Ladies, as they get closer to menopause, understand the value of balancing hormones. I mean, it is one of the most important things we can do for our health and fitness. So we know that hormones really, really, really matter. All right. So bodybuilders or physique athletes tend to have higher resting levels. I say resting because that's what counts. That's when the muscles grow is during rest. Okay. They don't grow when they're broken down, although they have to break down to grow, they actually grow during rest. Okay. Very, very important. The three that are most important for growth is testosterone. So again, physique athletes are going to have higher resting levels of testosterone. HGH, which is human growth hormone, physique athletes are going to have higher resting levels of HGH. And then finally, insulin growth factor or IGF. That's the third real biggie of the growth hormones. Physique athletes are going to have higher resting levels of these. Now, easier to understand this by thinking about anabolic steroids taken synthetically, which I am not a proponent of. I don't think it's very smart for your everyday person to take such things, especially if they don't have a medical reason to do so. If they have a medical reason to do so and they're doing it through their doctor, that's one thing. But athletes that are taking these so they can be bigger, stronger, faster, you know, yes, they work. I mean, they, they work. I mean, when people say, well, you know, oh, they, they, that didn't really help them. It, it did. It's just the bad part is there are so many side effects to taking anabolic steroids or anabolic growth hormones of any kind and anabolic means growth so there's just side effects they don't just go where you want them to go they create growth everywhere so i'm not a proponent of them i don't think it is a smart thing for 99.9 .9 of the people to do i'm just pointing out that they work okay so don't say rob said they're good no i never said that rob actually said they're bad what rob is saying is of course they work and of course there are side effects all right so i bring that up because i want you to understand how important they are if people are willing to put their health in jeopardy and most athletes that have taken them will say yeah i know there's a risk so they're willing to put their health in jeopardy they're willing to put their status as an athlete in jeopardy because they can get suspended from certain sports. And they're willing to spend money because like any street drug, they're not going to be cheap. So they're willing to do all of this to take them. Well, of course they work, okay? So what that means is the value of hormones cannot be overstated, cannot be overstated. and all of these things I want everybody to think about the next time you say you don't want to get bigger there are some people that they you know they'll, they'll tell us flat out we don't really want to put on or I don't really want to put on muscle and I get what they're saying I get the sentiment I get it I get it I get it but what you need to get when you're saying that is did you not hear those four things I just said and the last one being hormones, it doesn't happen that easily. There are people that would kill to put on a few pounds of muscle and you're worried about if you start working out at the gym, are you gonna get big? I mean, no, you're probably not. You're going to get stronger. You're gonna add some tonicity, some muscle tone, hopefully. That means your muscles are gonna get harder but it takes a lot of genetics and a lot of work to put on a lot of muscle. All right, so, and one final thing I wanna clear up on that. You hear people say sometimes, well, 
you know, that's all fake, they took drugs. Okay, getting back to the steroid thing again. Yes, I agree that a lot of athletes probably did, but I wanna caution you to think that that was the reason why they got so big. Did it help them? Yes, and again, not a proponent, gotta state this again and again and again so I don't get misquoted. I think it's a silly thing to do. I think it's an unwise thing to do. And I'm just telling you from an expert standpoint that it does work as far as what they're trying to get it to work for. But it sped up their results. It did not create their results. If they don't already have those other genetic factors, body type, muscle belly size, and fast twitch muscle fiber, I don't care how much steroids they're taking they're not going to get the effects they're looking for. They might get a little stronger, they might get a little bigger, and most of their weight will probably be fat, and they're going to look really bloated. They're going to have um, you know, acne problems. They're probably going to get a receding hairline because everything ages faster when you're taking anabolic steroids. I mean, you're basically trying to speed nature up, so everything is going to age quicker. I mean, that's just what happens. And they're not going to really look that much more muscular and they've just really taken all these drugs because they think, oh man, you know, well, my buddy got big down at the gym. It's like, well, yeah, but your buddy had he had the genetics most likely. Well, he did if he added a lot of muscle and they were working hard. Okay. So we got to be really careful painting everybody with a broad brush with that kind of stuff. Like we don't just get bigger because we start working out at the gym. We get maybe a little bit stronger and if we have the genetics towards it, then yes, we will get a little bit bigger. And I would just say for those that don't want it, I'd say, well, okay, so think about it this way. You're not gonna get that much bigger. And the benefit to, and again, I'm speaking to the people that are real nervous about it. The benefit to it is every time you're adding muscle, you're really cranking up your metabolism. Because a pound of muscle increases your, your calorie expenditure by about 15 calories a day. That's a lot over time. Like the best way to crank up your metabolism is to add muscle. So if you're so cautious about gaining a little bit of muscle, you're kind of you're kind of setting yourself up to gain more fat down the road. So I would just caution you against that. I mean, I understand the sentiment, but I would just really caution you with that if you are the type that can gain muscle and you're nervous about gaining muscle i mean muscle is great muscle is it's muscle <laughs> could not think of a better word i mean muscle is just you know keeping you younger it's keeping you stronger it is attractive you know and i know beauty's in the eye of the beholder i'm just saying that don't be so paranoid about gaining some weight by going to the gym because most likely unless you're in like that five or ten percent you don't have the genetics to gain a lot of muscle and if you did it really is a good thing all right so tammy that is a great question and as you see there is a huge amount of genetics in this and i want to encourage everybody to get to the gym you know if you're not in that genetic component to get on a physique stage, who cares? I mean, you're still going to get stronger. You're still going to become more fit. I mean, this is just one component of lifting. And I can tell you from a person who's been a personal trainer for 28 years and have worked with football teams with coaching and strength conditioning and other forms of coaching within football, your best athletes aren't always the ones with the greatest bodies, by the way. So don't Always, you know, don't poo-poo the gym just because maybe, oh, I don't have a physique of a bodybuilder or whatever. So now I'm going the other direction with this because I don't want anybody to get discouraged from, from lifting. Because sometimes your best athletes on the team, you, you wouldn't know that they were. You wouldn't know. You'd look at them and you'd say, oh, well, I don't know. They look kind of average. But they're super fast and they're super coordinated and they have great agility and they're strong as bulls and they have great endurance so you know don't think in terms of i don't have this so i'm not going to do that instead think of terms in terms of everybody can get better what no, no matter what your genetic predisposition is going to the gym will make you your absolute best all right 
great, great question. I want these questions. I'm so glad Tammy reached out because she heard Margaret's question from the other day and heard, oh, okay, people are asking questions. This is mine. That's what I want to hear, people. You are not bothering me, all right? So now it is absolute time to thank our second sponsor, chiropractic physician, Dr. Doris Antos in Ormond Beach, Florida. She is a very fit chiropractor, which most of them are. Most of them are extremely into health and fitness, and she's been doing this over 18 years in Ormond Beach. She's on Granada, and she has all different types of modalities she uses to treat her patients. Again, Dr. Doris Antos of Ormond Beach Chiropractic Physician. DaytonaBackPain.com is how to reach her, and I will put all of her contact information in the show notes. Until next time, be max fit and be max well.